Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your nights to come learn about New Braunfels with us. Um, I have my co-host Josh Gutierrez here with me as well, and we're going to get this started. All right, so tonight we're going to be speaking about New Braunfels. And to begin here, uh, we want to just do some brief introductions on uh, who you'll be learning with this evening. Josh, if you'd like to introduce yourself uh, to the people. Hey, you're on mute, Josh. Sorry about that. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining tonight. Um, my name is Josh Gutierrez. I'm one of the agents here in Marshall Reddick uh, for the San Antonio Central Texas region. Um, I've been with Marshall Reddick since um, their brick and mortar office started in um, 2017. Um, but I've been in the real estate circle for quite some time. Since 2003, I worked for Wells Fargo. Uh, and then I did the transition over to real estate. Um, I've got some uh, knowledge with property management. You know, I kind of grew hand in hand with the property management team and we'll shed a little bit more light on that. Um, born and raised in San Antonio. Uh, my first language was Spanish. Uh, and, you know, I've been blessed to work with a company that was starting up here in San Antonio. We kind of gelled and I've never looked back. I've never changed brokerages. And, you know, I'm looking to help more people find good investments so they can find uh, financial freedom through real estate. So looking forward to doing the presentation for you guys. Thank you so much, Josh. We appreciate you uh, taking the time to be with us here this evening. Um, Josh is an absolute wealth of knowledge when it comes to real estate investing and knows a lot. So we're really happy to have him here. And Josh, for one reason or another, it's not letting me go to the next slide. Could you bring up the next slide for me? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much, sir. All right, guys. Good evening. My name is Tyler. Thank you again so much for being here this evening. Um, my role at Marshall Reddick is uh, an advisor. Um, so I started off my real estate career selling real estate locally in Orange County, California. And I went to Clarkson. I was born and raised in New York. I went to Clarkson from financial information analysis and portfolio management. My, my goal at the time was to go to Wall Street. Um, ended up working in real estate when I moved out here to California. And after selling homes and buying homes for a number of years, uh, I linked up with Marshall Reddick, who was doing investment real estate. And I found what a great opportunity to combine my, my real estate background with my, my portfolio management and, and finance background and, and have it looked back. Um, just recently uh, completed the negotiation mastery program at Harvard and a little bit about my background, right? So I've done about 50 million in investment real estate transactions myself uh, across 13 different states. Uh, Marshall Reddick has brick and mortar offices in a number of states, but being that we've been in business since 1979, so, you know, 50 something years at this point, um, we have contacts all over the U.S. And so it is a personal goal of mine to, to transact in all 50 states. So if anybody out there has uh, some some property in Alaska, that one has been the toughest one so far, <laughs> let me know. Um, I've got about 200 five-star reviews uh, online and I was recently featured on the Icons of Real Estate podcast. The reason that I like to give this background on myself and Josh likes to do on, on him as well um, is to let you guys know that when you're working with Marshall Reddick, you're working with an advisor like me or an agent like Josh, uh, we're experienced and educated in this topic. Um, you know, real estate is not a, a side job for us. It is not a hobby. Um, it is our career and it is our passion as well. Uh, so we just want you guys to know that, um, you know, that there's a lot of trust that can be put into us and, and we appreciate that trust. I'm going to see if I can go to the next slide here. There we go. All right. So. Let's dive in, guys. Uh, what we're going to cover tonight. Uh, so we're going to go over Marshall Reddick's available services. We have a number of business units here. And I'm going to touch briefly on all of them. They all co-mingle within the real estate investing world. Um, and you may find uh, that through your, your tenure and your relationship with Marshall Reddick that some of these services may be of help. So I'm going to touch on those briefly. We're going to talk about how we choose the markets to invest in. Um, you know, during the COVID boom, uh, we saw appreciation in, in almost every market across the U.S. 
And it, it really led to this thought process, especially with beginning investors, that if you buy real estate anywhere, it's going to work out. And that's just not true. You know, now that you know, interest rates have come up it, due to the inflation woes and things of that nature. We are seeing a lot of markets correct and a lot of investors, um, you know, are taking some hard hits. So we want to talk about how we choose where we invest so that you understand um, where we're coming from when we're talking about our markets. Then we're going to dive into what everyone's here for tonight, and that is the New Braunfels, Texas market. Um, I personally have been to New Braunfels a number of times, checking out property, checking out the city. It is an awesome, awesome city, and we're really excited to dive into it. We have never, as an organization, um, dedicated an entire seminar to the New Braunfels city, uh, so you guys get to see the, the first go at it, and, and we're really excited to have you here this evening. Then we're going to go over some specific property examples that are available today. Uh, me and Josh went last night and we identified properties that are available today and then we ran all the numbers on them, right? We did a deep dive into what these properties look like, how they're going to behave, how they're going to react, how they're going to return, right? All properties behave differently. All properties return differently, different velocities and different volumes, right? And so we wanted to be able to illustrate to you guys this evening what investing in New Braunfels looks like when doing so with Marshall Reddick. And then we're going to talk about next steps. <clears throat> right? So what do we expect from you guys? Uh, learn and take notes, right? Uh, after this uh, webinar this evening, you're all going to receive a recorded copy of this, right? So if you miss anything, no worries. It's all going to be sent to you. But uh, we would um, appreciate it if any questions that you have off the top of your head that you put them in the chat box. And then at the end of the, the seminar this evening, we're going to dive into those and, and answer all those questions for you. If anything pops up, between the end of the seminar this evening and our follow-up calls that we'll have with you moving forward, please feel free to write those down so that we can answer them when we speak. Um, and without further ado, guys, uh, really excited again to have you here this evening. Let's dive in. Let's talk about investing uh, in New Braunfels. All right, so off the top, Marshall Reddick Real Estate. Who are we and what do we do? Uh, so like I mentioned, we started in 1979. We started as a real estate brokerage, right? Back before investing in real estate was uh, a hot trend and things of that nature that you see today on online and in social media and all of that. Um, there was a man named Marshall Reddick. And Marshall Reddick would hold seminars teaching people how to build passive income through long-term real estate investing, right? And, and he did that for a number of years. Um, Little over a decade ago, uh, through some data analyzation and things of that nature, uh, we discovered something uh, quite imperative. And that is, we were doing such an incredible job helping our investors pinpoint awesome investments, right? And helping them obtain those investments. Uh, but once we did, we had to hand them over to the property managers in those areas. And at that point, we could no longer continue guaranteeing the, the type of service and experience that our clients were finding with Marshall Reddick. It kind of goes back to that old saying, um, if you want something done right, do it yourself. And so at that point, we opened up our own property management business within Marshall Reddick so that we can ensure when we help our clients like you invest in incredible property, that we will then manage that property for you to make sure that it's going right. Our hope is that the experience is, is so incredible and smooth and you, and you find and discover the powers of real estate investing that you will want to continue investing in real estate. And we hope that it's no brainer that you'll want to do that with us. And property managing for our clients personally is the, is the, the magic bullet that really allows that to happen. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about property management uh, towards the end of the seminar. We're also a private money lender. So we help clients like you lend out your money to real estate professionals and earn a return um, on that money lent. And finally, we have an investment fund. Much like you might lend your money uh, on a mortgage and earn the interest on that, the investment fund is a pool where you put your money into our fund and then our fund funds mortgages and you earn a return on that, right? And so all of these work together to allow our clients to earn different types of returns at different speeds and velocities and timelines and things of that nature using real estate as the hard asset to do so. Um, the majority of our employees have utilized all of these services at Marshall Reddick, 
myself included. I've used Marshall Reddick to buy and sell properties and I've used Marshall Reddick to manage uh, my rental properties. I have personally funded loans through the private money lending division and I have a lot of my money in the fund now. They are all excellent tools and they're all part of a, a really solid portfolio. And this is just a quick shot of, of us as a team. These are the members of our team in our different offices here. And, and we just like to let everybody see us, if you will, right? Um, we are not the kind of organization that hides online behind you know, banners and, and stock images and things of that nature. When you're working with Marshall Reddick, you'll have dedicated advisors, dedicated property managers, dedicated agents that you will get to know and will become your friends and, and become family. And that's really one of the powerful parts about Marshall Reddick is that we have clients that have been with us for decades. Um, we get invited to, to weddings and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it just goes to show, you know, the, the kind of relationships that we look to build with our investors and our clients. And so we like to say, you know, this is us. We're real people. We're hardworking people. We're educated people and experienced people. And we're looking forward to working with you. Okay, so how do we get started, right? This is our investment methodology, right? My job as an advisor is to speak with each of you and go through these parameters so that we can identify what markets and what properties make sense for your specific goals, right? Someone looking to retire soon and offset the loss of W-2 income is gonna be looking at a much different property in most likely a different market than someone who is looking to build nest eggs that they will use 20, 30 years down the line, right? And so we start with why. We start with your goal. Is your goal to create passive income? Is your goal to start building steps to walk away from your job? Is your goal to build for retirement, right? We need to understand what it is you're trying to accomplish. And then we're going to talk about your options. We're going to evaluate how we can do this. Like I said, different types of properties react differently. They return differently, different speeds different volumes, right? So we're going to go over those options. <clears throat> then we're going to talk about time frame. Time frame is huge, right? Uh, for some people uh, looking uh, to create passive income, there might be certain times of the year where it makes more sense to start this process, right? For example, we're able to obtain higher rents during the summer and lower rents during the winter. That's cyclical. That's in most markets across the U.S. So we're going to talk about your timelines, right? Then we're going to set your criteria right? What are, what kind of capital do you have? Uh, what kind of hold do you want on your investments? What kind of cash flows do you need for this investment to make sense or don't need for this investment to make sense? What kind of tax benefits are you looking to acquire in real estate investment, right? We're going to dive into all of that. Then we're going to identify which markets make sense. Just like all investments behave differently, all markets behave differently. And some markets are going to be better for your goals and some are going to be worse for your goals. And so we're going to identify which of those markets make sense. And at that point, once we've identified all of this, we're going to introduce you to the key players like Josh here. Um, if San Antonio and Central Texas turns out to be the right market for you, we're going to introduce you to the players in those markets. We're going to help you be able to hunt for property, analyze property, run those numbers, ultimately submit offers and acquire those properties and then transition those properties into Marshall Reddick property management, right? So this is our circle. And once we go through the whole thing and we get to the end and you've had an incredible experience and you're ready to invest in more real estate, we're going to start right back at the beginning because your goals have probably changed. Your timelines have probably changed. Your capital has probably changed. So this is a revolving circle that we will continuously use throughout our relationship together. And your investment criteria is going to determine what we're looking at when we look at these properties, right? Um, the type of capital that you have down, maybe the market that you're in, maybe the return you're looking for is going to dictate price point, right? And it's also going to dictate property class. We have an entire book on, on classing properties. There's going to be a link to that book at the end of this seminar. But if anybody wants a copy of it, just put a note in the chat box. I will send you one for absolutely free, right? But essentially, what we're looking at. A class properties, when you class a property, you look at <clears throat> luxury, A, B, C, D. A class properties are going to be more appreciated properties. Properties that may not um, have the best cash flows, 
but are breaking even, making a couple hundred a month, but you're going to be looking at a larger net profit at the end of the term versus a B or C class property, which may not be in a market where you're going to find as extreme appreciation, but on a monthly basis, you're going to get that monthly return higher cash flows. Again, it all depends on your goals, what you're trying to accomplish. For many seasoned investors, there's a portion of both. They'll have some in, in the long-term plays, they'll have some in shorter term. Right, So the conversations we have are going to help us dictate those investment criteria for you. Again, property type, single family, duplex, fourplex, they all behave differently. They all return differently and act differently. And we're going to identify which makes sense for your goals. Right, Condition, maybe you are looking to do some forced appreciation. Maybe you're looking to flip homes. Right, Or maybe you're a new investor. You've never invested in real estate. This is your first one. And new construction may make more sense for you. Right. So again, our conversations are going to help us detail out uh, what makes most sense for you so that we can start analyzing those options and, and, and come up with great solutions and investments for you. <clears throat> and so now we begin. Let's dive into New Braunfels. Right. What makes a good market? Like I mentioned earlier, uh, during the COVID boom, um, everywhere did great for the most part. Right. You could you could throw you a dart at a dartboard. And whatever city you landed on, you could throw 100,000 at it, and two years later, you probably made some money. But the the, the COVID market is is um, it's not statistically true, right? Uh, there was a lot of things that happened that that caused that. And so we really want to make sure that we're analyzing markets and choosing markets that are going to perform as we say that they are, right? Um, we're not just realtors; we're also property managers, right? So we don't go away. When, when we help you obtain that property, we that property needs to perform as we told you it would because we're still going to be working with you. We're still going to be speaking all the time, and we want to make sure that, that we're delivering on our promises. So when we're analyzing what makes a good market, these are the criteria we look for, right? We're looking for a strong and economically diverse job market, right? It is It is not a good investment to put your money in a city with two major employers. Because if there's a market shift and that employer hits hard times, you're going to lose a large part of your tenant base. Now you've got a lot of vacant rentals. What happens? Rental prices come down, supply and demand, and all of a sudden we're in a bad investment, right? So we're looking for strong job markets, but also diverse. We're also looking for markets with certain vacancy rates, right? There are markets with a lot of vacancy. You don't want to be in a market with a lot of vacancy. You want to be in a market with high rental demand so that the number of days your property is vacant on market is as low as possible, right? So you are not covering those carrying costs of the mortgage. We wanna be in areas with housing affordability, right? There are some really cool real estate markets out there, uh, maybe say New York City, for example, where we see these really cool high rises and the, the lofted ceilings and the awesome balconies and all of that. However, due to the, the lack of affordability there, the price to rent ratios, they do not pencil out in a way that putting renters in those properties long-term makes sense, right? So we're identifying markets where the housing affordability dictates a solid price to rent ratio, right? We want to be in markets that are landlord friendly. There are plenty of markets out there that are not, right? If you look at Southern California, for example, um, not very landlord friendly, right? Versus if you look at Texas, very landlord friendly. Um, here at Marshall Reddick, we find that tenant screening is, is the, the key here. And, and we screen tenants harder than anybody else. But that's not to say that sometimes you don't end up with a with a, a problem tenant. If you own enough properties for long enough, eventually you will. You want to make sure that you're in a market um, where you are going to be able to remain in charge, right? We want to be in a market with strong education. People move to areas for the schools. And if you're in a market with good schools, it's going to help the appreciation of your property and it's going to be high demand for renters. And then ultimately, we want to put you somewhere where there's going to be reliable property management. You can get the coolest house in the coolest city. And if your property management is garbage, your experience is going to be garbage and you're not going to want to continue investing. And we have seen the power of long-term investing and what it can do. Uh, for clients financially, really changing lives and legacies. And we want you to, to be a part of that. And you're not going to be a part of it if you have a bad experience the first go around. So we want to make sure you have a good one. Property management is going to make sure that that happens. This is a quick look at our national footprint. And then we're going to dive into New Braunfels, right? So all these cities here, these are cities where we have brick and mortar offices. This is where we have W2 staff. 
uh, doing all the property management, back end accounting. We have agents in all these areas. We'll have our marketing teams, our software teams, things of that nature. And these are the areas that you will find where pro uh, Marshall Reddick um, provides property management. And so you can see that we have a number of, of, of offices here, a number of options. Again, all of these markets behave differently and return differently. And not any market is better than any other market. It depends on your goals and what you're trying to accomplish, right? And so without any further ado tonight, we're gonna dive into New Braunfels. Again, this is our first um, seminar on this city. We have found a lot of success for our investors in this city that continues to grow. Um, and uh, really, really excited and appreciative, Josh, uh, for you to be here tonight and, and, and walk through this investment opportunity with our clients and, and help educate our clients on this area. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to hit my mute button. Josh, I'm going to let you take it over. Um, thank you again so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it, sir. All right. So... Let's talk about New Braunfels. Um, New Braunfels is one of my favorite towns to hang out. I'm always looking for an excuse to go down there. Um, I live in uh, far west San Antonio. I live on the complete other side of the city, but uh, the majority of my business, of the investors that I work with, are in the New Braunfels area between Austin and San Antonio. Uh, the reason I bring that up, it's because it's a testament to how much focus has been put in there. Um, you know, I can do my homework all the time, um, which I do. I live and breathe it every day. But I get so many phone calls from uh, clients out of state that are like, hey, I'm hearing a lot about New Braunfels. What can you tell me about it? So I'd like to start talking about New Braunfels and tell you how I describe New Braunfels to all my clients. I tell them, it's a little bit, it's a dash of Austin, a sprinkle of California, and a whole lot of Texas. That's really what it's like. Um, the best comparison I can give to most folks is if you're from uh, California, you know, Austin is like LA and New Braunfels is like Orange County. That's how I compare it. Um, New Braunfels is special. It's logistically a gem. Um, it's located between uh, Austin and San Antonio on a major, major highway artery that goes all the way from Mexico to Canada, which is I-35. Um, it's centrally located 30 miles north of San Antonio and 45 miles south of Austin, which makes it very uh, a coveted place to live in because you can enjoy the best of both worlds, right? Everyone knows about the dining and the fun times in South Austin, and you can be there uh, you know, with a quick drive, but you can also hit up the shopping in North San Antonio. Um, not only that, I mean, you can enjoy a lot of things in, in New Braunfels as far as like fine dining boutiques. Um, also like, you know, antique shopping is like, you can close your eyes and point and you'll find it. Um, just really, really cool place to be living in. And uh, a testament to that is, um, this fact that I put down here at the bottom. So this is the first time I've done this presentation. It's a brand new presentation. No one has ever seen this. So I thought, let me throw in some little tidbits that'll help you understand the growth. The projected population growth um, for this year is to be 116,000 for 2024. Four years ago, I used to tell clients that the population was 90,000. So what does that equate to? That equates to nearly a growth of 30% in these four years. Now, you got you to gotta think about that. What happened in this last four years? COVID. People were moving here during COVID like crazy. And we were able to see the growth. Um, and that's why I say it's got a little dash of California because that's where they came from too, right? So just really cool stuff to talk about. Um, I'm gonna be toggling between the presentation and the map because I wanna give you the lay of the land as well. So what's trending, right? So we talked a little bit about the growth in uh, New Braunfels. Um, New Braunfels has been uh, to say, I don't know how else to say, it, but it's been a powerhouse uh, as far as like growth and appreciation. We're very conservative at Marshall Reddick. So when we talk about it, um, we always say, look, um, 
we're not going to say, you know, that 2021, 2022 was, you know, the bar that you kind of like measure everything with because that was an anomaly. But consistently throughout time, it's been an average of 4.5% um, appreciation year after year in New Braunfels, which is really cool. You've seen some years where it's at seven. You've seen some years where it's at four. But it's always been very consistent, okay? Um, you can see the crescendo here, how it's showing that throughout the years, it's just been going up and up and up. I just shared what the population is going to. And there's no signs right now, no signs right now of it slowing down. If anything, it's still showing progress. Another little fact, um, people will always ask me, um, New Braunfels, um, where did it come, get its name from? It's an old um, Texas German settlement. Um, it was settled by Prince Carl of Psalms Braunfels from Germany, and he named it after his uh, hometown, Psalms Braunfels, and that's why it's a new Braunfels. Um, it was one of the first cities established in 1845, and at one point it was the fourth largest city in, San, in, um, in Texas uh, with 1,723 uh, residents. Pretty cool. Now, uh, one of the things that Tyler talked about before we got into the New Braunfels market and, and how it makes it strong, we're going to talk about things in twos, okay? There's two things that are happening, right? You got two major arteries, and I think for this, I'm going to toggle out of the presentation, and I'm going to show you on a map. As you can see, New Braunfels is right in the center of Austin and San Antonio. If I zoom in here, you'll see that Highway 35 is going from south to north right through the heart of New Braunfels. You will also notice that parallel to 35, you see Highway I-10. Those two arteries are logistical very critical pieces to the growth and economic growth of New Braunfels and the surrounding area. If you're transporting goods out of Mexico, the first major city you're gonna hit is San Antonio. And if you wanna import and export it, you gotta go through I-10 to Houston. And if you're transporting goods from Mexico through San Antonio, through New Braunfels to Austin, you gotta go through New Braunfels. So those two highways, those two arteries are providing lots of trade to go in and out of this area. That lends for a lot of employers, right? So let's see. That's why we have employers like, um, you know, Cisco, right? Which is a food company. You have Caterpillar. You have, uh, Caterpillar is the one that uh, creates all the construction equipment. Um, you have Tyson Foods, you have a lot of mill work, a lot of plastic manufacturers. Um, but notice that when I said we're talking about things in two. And the reason I talk about things in two is because that town is known as the city of two rivers, which is the Camal and the Guadalupe, right? From the beginning of the settlement, and I have a little blurb down here, it's always been an employment powerhouse. They were able to use the power of the river to create mills, which are river mills. Obviously, we've come into a different time 100 years later, right, if not more. But that gave the start, and that created those arteries, those highways and byways to trade goods, to, to manufacture things, to mill things. And now you can see here where there's a lot of stuff you can do and work here. Um, and that's just in, in the surrounding areas, and if not in New Braunfels and Seguin, but you also have still stuff going on in Austin and San Antonio where it's a quick commute right straight to New Braunfels. Now that I've given you a little bit about New Braunfels and now that you know, okay, it's, it's here for good, I wanna give you some insight into the market on what's going on around here. And this is important for you to know right? Whether you use Tyler or myself or whichever way you want to go, I want you to learn something about our market. 
this is this is very very good information and i and i want everyone to like really pay attention to this part if anything what real estate market are we in right now do you ever um hear that question is like what kind of market are we in well right now we're in a buyer's market the rates are high um there's adjustments happening to real estate property right now and if you're a buyer you want to take advantage you want to take these guys to the cleaners right now that's when you get an investment property in this time um if you're a seller it's not such a good time we would probably advise you to wait unless you have a dire situation where you have to offboard a property the reason we say that is because as a seller there's not a lot of movement affordability is very low and you're going to need to offer a lot of incentives to stand out from the competition and we'll teach you how to leverage that as a buyer here in a minute so what happened why is it like this why josh why is it a buyer's market why is it not a, a seller's market well let me tell you why post covid right the, the the time we're living in now there's a lot of supply and not a lot of demand so what happened in 2021 2022 early 2023 the builders couldn't keep up with the demand so they said you know what just build guys continue building 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 well, then they, the, the feds hit the brakes with the rates, right? They spiked those up. And now you have all this build available through new build. Uh, new build. I'm talking like KB Homes, DR Horton, Lennar, all your big boys. And those guys all have inventory for you to shop through right now. You can get a pretty decent home in a great area, good school district, low crime, with a great adjustment and they'll give you closing costs and they'll give you money to buy down your rate. There was a time where we would joke is like, hey, uh, during COVID, uh, we would help buyers and, and we would literally ask, hey, are you gonna put in the doors on this buy? Because the demand was so much, they didn't have to include a lot of things. Right now, they're gonna give you all the bells and whistles with it. So that leads to a question. Do I do a new build versus a pre-owned, right? I'm gonna say new builds all day, every day. Why? Like I said, they're incentive heavy, right? The builders are competing with other builders who have supply and they want you to get a contract. So they're gonna give you everything under the sun to get in there. Now, the new builds, are doing something very interesting to the pre-owned market. And you guys might notice this in your markets too. The new builds, what they're doing is they're undercutting the pre-owned regular Joe seller, right? They don't have enough either equity or, or power to offer an incentive. Their margins are already low because of the corrections and they can't compete with the new build incentives because it's new. So that's making a lot of the pre-owned market hang out there for 60, 70 days on average. So there's also some low hanging fruit there, but today we're gonna focus on new builds because those are the ones that are gonna have the better opportunities for you. So where do we shop? Where, where, where do we, um, focus our attention to when we're talking to investor clients. Like I mentioned earlier, when I was showing you the map, you want to stay around Highway 46 and Highway 123 in between 35 and I-10. Now I'm going to toggle back out of this so I can show you. Here's I-10. I-10, as you know, goes from California to Florida, uh, west to east, east to west. Right, and then here's 35 that goes north, Mexico to Canada. So you have New Braunfels here, but the east side of New Braunfels is where you're gonna see a lot of the growth. As you can see, whatever's white is developed. Whatever is green is still fields, farms, right? And that still has room for growth and appreciation. So the growth is gonna go to the east, northeast, 
towards Seguin, okay? So when we're looking at this, there's two other little arteries that run parallel to each other. This is Highway 46, which connects Seguin to New Braunfels. And then you have the other Highway 123. All your growth is gonna happen in this section right here. That's where we're for, uh, focusing your investment buys. Why? Because if you go closer to downtown New Braunfels, remember, I said it's like Orange County. It's a little pricey. It comes with the price tag. So a lot of people are starting to do a little bit of an exodus out there because they're saying, hey, it's getting a little pricey for me. I can't afford that rent right now. I can, but I don't want to, right? So I, I, I'll just go to, you know, the outskirts, get some new construction. I'll get a new rental. And I can still commute to New Braunfels within 15 to 20 minutes without the price tag. This is very key. This is very important for people to know. If you walk away with anything, just know that this is the corridor you want to be in right now because you can still buy relatively cheap and still get a lot of uh, meat left on the bone for appreciation. Okay. Uh, and I'll show you some pricing, which is going to be, you know, for most unbelievable because it, you can buy a new build you know for 250k in this area and you'll get a decent rent in a good school district all right now let's talk about the secret sauce once we've identified the area josh what are you what are you sharing with these guys what are you telling them how are they buying their property <clears throat> Well, here's the secret sauce, right? I'm gonna give you the ingredients. You wanna buy a three bedroom, two bath, nothing less than that. Most investment properties in this area are gonna be a three, two by default anyway. And you wanna stay no less than 1400 square feet in your uh, single family home investment as far as square footage is, is uh, concerned. Um, I tend to stick around a master plan community just because if you're shopping in that area, you're looking for families. Why are you looking for families? Because you want longevity, right? In your rental, you want them to have at least an 18 to 24 month term. And when you're when a family is looking in a good school district in low crime, they're gonna stick around, but you gotta give them the space. So it's gotta be a three, two, minimum 1400 square feet on a single family. If we're talking multifamily, there's a little wiggle room in there, right? Because they're units. It's a different um, audience or pool of renter, more starter, more, more starter renters. So you can do a little bit of wiggle room on the square footage. But if you're talking single family, you want to stay 1,400 square feet and up because what I have seen, people who make good money have nice things. And if they have nice things, they need space for their nice things, right? They want that two car garage for their toys. So just remember that part. <clears throat> okay, let's dive in here and take a look at um, some property. Uh, and let's look at the map one more time, just so I can give you a, a quick uh, refresher on what we're looking at. So let's look at the map. We're focusing on this Highway 46 corridor, right? Highway 46 in between New Braunfels and Seguin. And people um, often ask me, Josh, why, why is this corridor so hot? And I'll tell you why. You'll notice that the river runs east. It runs east towards Seguin, and it actually cuts through Seguin for many, many years and still now, heavy employment has been 15 to 20 minutes away from New Braunfels. There's also mills, manufacturing and other employers here where people used to commute to Seguin and go back home to New Braunfels. And that's still happening now. And that's why this is like a little baby Dallas, Fort Worth area in the making. It's in its beginning like stages. These two towns are bleeding into each other where you can't notice 
where one starts and one ends, okay? So now that we're, we know the area we're gonna focus on, as far as I, 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 if I raise my hand and I say, I'm a new Braunfels investor, I'm gonna go shop, this is where you wanna look into, right? Okay, let's go back into the presentation. And now I'll show you some examples, right? So I'm gonna give you examples and then I'm gonna take you to the map so you can see where those are at. We're gonna start off with a duplex. Now, this is one of my favorite setups right now that I've been offering to uh, investors because it has a special incentive behind it, okay? This particular duplex, right now, I have it listed at 5.25%, but it's actually lower. The builder has made a deal with CMG Financial and they've bought a rate of 4.75% on this duplex investment. The investment is at 539K, but I think I can do a wiggle room deal with the builder at 535 because it's more of a niche type property, right? Duplexes, they're not very common. There's less builders for duplexes. So there's not a lot of wiggle room in the price point, but because of the relationship I have with the builder, I can probably swing something on it. But for sure, with a rate of 4.75%, that is a huge deal. That'll help you cash flow a lot easier on this property. Um, not to mention, uh, Marshall Reddick has partnered with this builder and said, hey, we'll give you one year of free management if you contract on this property, along with the 4.75%. So year one, you're cash flowing very nicely. Um, these rent right now, realistically, between 1595 and 1650 per door, but this is brand new construction. So year one, you have doorknob to doorknob warranty, okay? Now I'm gonna talk a lot of this. Oh, let me go back. And I'm gonna take you to the point where these are located, okay? Uh, let's go to Emma Drive. So see where it's at? This was the original road to Seguin. The 725 road was the original road before Highway 46. Notice that it runs parallel to 46. Emma Drive is here. And now you see, this is the third phase of duplexes. You can see the first two phases here before it. Here's the final phase. We have five buildings left at the 4.75% rate. Um, it's perfect if you're doing a 1031 exchange because it's completed construction already. Um, great location off 725. 725 right now is being widened out so we can be another artery to parallel along 46. All right, let's go to our next one. So um, here's an example of a builder um, really saying, you know what? Um, there's a lot of supply out here in my area right now. I need to just make an adjustment. You know, it's not the COVID days anymore. I got to throw in a deal, okay? This deal, original, this, this home, it's a three bedroom, two bath, okay? It's 1,523 square feet, good size. Um, it's going for 249,472. Now, I don't know the exact incentives behind this builder, which is a KB home builder, but I do know that CMG Financial, who, which is our preferred lender, um, Reed Hazard, I'm sure a lot of you know him. If we can get 2% credit from the seller, he can get you to a 5.99% rate with that 2%. And that's money that's not even coming out of your pocket. This will help you break even at that point. Should you decide to put more money towards the rate buy down out of your own pocket, that will also help your cash flow. But at 249, right, where, where a lot of these properties, and right now I can show you examples, surrounding areas, 
properties in that area were closing anywhere from 280 to 320K. This was about a year and a half ago. So what am I, why do I bring that up? If you can get a property right now at 249K and a rent at 1750, right? Because those other properties set the rate for rentals, you're gonna be sitting pretty good. This is a very solid conservative approach on a single family investment. Now that's with 30% down. If you were to do more, that's on you, but 30% will at least break you even and we can get 2% credit from the seller. Why? Because we have the leverage. It's a buyer's market, remember that. Now I'm gonna take you to the uh, map to show you where 432 Horizon Point is located. Again, you're gonna see a lot of similarities in these properties as far as location is concerned. Three, two, horizon. Okay. If I'm gonna zoom out so we can look at the area that we were talking about. Remember again, this area in the middle? And here's the school district, Navarro, IS, uh, Navarro High School or Navarro ISD, okay? It's minutes from this property. One of the major employers, Vitesco Technologies, is literally across the road. Okay, you also have um, the Utilities Operations Center, the city of Seguin, which is another major employer where we get a lot of tenants from, is also right down the road. This area right here, if you were to say, hey, you know what, I wanna go have a night out in New Braunfels, it would be about a 20 minute drive to downtown New Braunfels. You would cut through Cordova, swing up through 46, and you're in downtown New Braunfels in no time. Great area for appreciation. Lots of growth coming down um, through here. Just amazing area. Lots of, um, you're gonna see a lot of new shopping centers that are being developed right now, um, just because it's close to the I-10 corridor. But great area, I've been helping a lot of clients buy investment property in this area and they've been doing very well. All right, let's go to our next example. 541 Cordova Crossing is another um, great property. Single family home, um, it's a little smaller in square footage. Um, it's about, what, let's see, one, 60 square feet smaller, 1,459 square feet. Again, similar price point, 249K. Um, and you can still negotiate the 2% credit from the builder, okay? Um, this is very similar to Horizon Point. As a matter of fact, it's still Navarro School District. It's just on the other side of uh, 123. So now I'm gonna take you to that one. So here's where uh, the previous single family was down here in this area you move up to uh, Cordova right across the road. And this is actually closer to the, the school, closer to New Braunfels, why? Because it's closer to 46, can jump on Cordova. Um, and that's a brand new single family home. Um, I believe that both of these homes, uh, when I was looking at them in MLS, they've both been marked down over 30K, if not more. Um, those are the adjustments that the builder's hands being forced right now. And that's why I, I tell a lot of buyers, take advantage. Um, you can leverage that to, to, to your advantage and get a good deal. <clears throat> Josh, thank you so much for, for going through the, the maps and New Braunfels with us and, and checking out some property examples. Guys, we're just going to touch on property management uh, real quickly. And then we're gonna wrap this up and, and let you get back to your evenings. You know, in the coming days, next week, we'll be following up with everybody on the call, answer any questions you may have. And, you know, 
work to understand where you are in your investing goals and and hopefully we can build a relationship or we can work together and help you guys accomplish some of those so property management like i had mentioned before really is the key that makes all this work right you've got an excellent agent like josh out in in new braunfels to help you locate the right property get a good deal with the builder get some of those incentives negotiated and things of that nature um should also note that a lot of those incentives that josh is speaking with are not publicly known they're just based on the you know us working with those those builders for decades right that's kind of the behind closed doors this is the kind of deal that we can get your clients kind of stuff right so josh thank you so much for bringing that to the table for our clients tonight appreciate you um but once you've acquired that property and you've got that great deal it's now time that we we move that property into property management right and the the goal here is that the property management service allows you to own investment real estate without having to truly be a full-time landlord the majority of our clients are not full-time investors they're teachers they're firefighters they're doctors lawyers um you name it right and they realize that there's a place in their portfolio for investment real estate but they don't have the capacity to be answering phones at three in the morning because there's a clogged toilet or you know, whatever it may be and that's what property management you know helps alleviate and so this is the life cycle i'm just going to go through it real quick right so initially we do your property evaluation you've closed on your property right well actually realistically we'll probably do this a couple days before you close so that we can ensure we get it to market right away and keep that vacancy low but we're going to come and we're going to evaluate the property now sometimes with new construction there can still be things that need to be addressed so we're going to go through we're going to do that due diligence for you work with the builder to make sure that everything is spot on as it needs to be right in the meantime we'll be doing a rental analysis to figure out you know exactly where we can pinpoint this thing for rent right we the you guys will sign the management agreements we go through the onboarding process you will have a portal online where you can log in and see your rent being paid see any issue logging things of that nature right make ready repairs are done then we begin right so professional photos and advertisement are done we don't do the iphone thing here uh, and we begin with a phone screening we make sure that all of our tenants or uh, possible tenants make you know uh, minimum three times the monthly rent and income. We make sure they have minimum 600 credit score. We make sure that their pet situation matches your pet preference. And we're making sure that they're looking to move uh, within the next two weeks, right? Once they pass that, we then do an in-person interview at the property, right? So we're gonna walk the property with that prospective tenant, um, selling it, all the aspects of the home and the neighborhood, answering any questions they may have, so on and so forth. And then if they're ready to move forward, oh, I'm sorry, hey, Josh, could you put that back up for me? I lost that real quick. Um, if they're ready to move forward, then we're gonna begin with the screening process, right? So we are going to do, um, you know, criminal credit and background checks, just as any property manager should, where we go above and beyond is we're gonna do personal employment verification. We're gonna call their employer, make sure that everything they've listed is correct, but make sure there's no disciplinary actions, they're not on any probationary periods, so on and so forth. We're gonna do personal income verification, right? So we need to see their bank statements. We need to see uh, that they have at least three times the monthly rent and income, but we're also knocking out anyone with any 90 day lates on any open accounts um, or any bankruptcies on file. We then require um, that their current landlord and their previous landlord give them an amazing raving five-star review. We will send their two previous landlords paperwork to fill out um, and, and we require that they have just a, an awesome tenant history. Once we've gone through all this and we identify who we believe the best tenant for your property is gonna be, uh, we're gonna provide that to you. Here's all the information that we can provide you under you know, uh, fair housing and all of that. And then um, should you agree, we're gonna send them the lease. Once we execute the lease, um, they move in. We do a move-in evaluation with them. So this is another um, full-on inspection of the property, tenant in tow, and then they're gonna sign off on, on the condition of every square inch of that property, right? And then from there, we're handling any ongoing maintenance, any issues the tenants need, right? Uh, Mid-lease, we do a property evaluation, make sure that everything is, is as it should be. And then at the end of that term, if your tenant wants to renew, we're gonna do another inspection. We're gonna make sure the tenant, the lease is being upheld. There's no new people, no new pets, 
uh, condition report, make sure they're taking care of the property. And then we are going to uh, negotiate in your rental price increases for you every single year. So it's a full nuts to bolts situation. I always like to tell my clients that once you bring your properties on with property management, you can then disappear to the Bahamas, wherever it may be um, for a number of years. And when you come back, everything will be working just as it should. Funny enough, I, I spoke to a client today and I said that exact same thing and he let me know that he is disappearing to Argentina. So that's exactly what he was looking for, funny enough. Okay, and so why um, Marshall Reddick property management, right? You know, I just detailed out the process and, and everything we do, but why us, you know, versus another property manager, right? There are other options out there. <clears throat> A big thing is, is the importance that we put on our website and our, our software. We use Appfolio, which is the number one property management software in the US. It is it is not cheap, but we make that investment so that our clients, you, have that at your disposal, right? You can log in at any given time and, and control what's going on with your property with the click of a button. Maintenance is a big one. Here at Marshall Reddick, we don't upcharge on maintenance, but a lot of our competitors do, right? A lot of our competitors, you know, maybe you have a stove malfunction, and then the quote comes out to $400 to fix that. A lot of the other property managers in town are going to add 10% onto that and pass it along to you. We feel like that's a conflict of interest. Here at Marshall Reddick, anytime work needs to be done, um, we go out and get a minimum of three bids for you from our contractor network. These are contractors that we've we've worked with hundreds and hundreds of times before. We're not just bringing anybody off the street into our clients' properties. They're all licensed and insured and bonded and all of that, but we know that they do good work. And also what's cool is that our contractors know how we work. So when they get a quote request from us, they know that we're getting at least two from their competitors. So it really works to keep your maintenance costs fair. When you own investment property, there's two things that kill your return. Vacancy, how many days that property is not actively collecting rent in your maintenance. Our job is to keep both of those um, as minimal as absolute possible, right? Cost versus service, which is more important, right? With some property managers, the eh, they're cheap, you know, they're inexpensive, but you get really bad service. You know, with Marshall Reddick, pricing wise, we're not the most expensive in town. We're smack dab in the middle, right? But our goal is to provide the absolute best service in town. And I would invite anyone on this webinar to go to Zillow, go to Yelp, and go to Google and look at our property management reviews and see what hundreds and hundreds of other investors just like you who don't live in these areas, but invest in these areas from Marshall Reddick, read what they're saying about our service. And, and it, we're really happy at our, our price to service ratio, right? Responsiveness is obviously huge and it's a big differentiator with Marshall Reddick, right? A lot of our competitors, um, everyone in their shop wears all the hats. So someone who's a leasing agent is also a sales agent. They're also a maintenance manager and you're gonna get whoever happens to be in the office when you call in. Here at Marshall Reddick, our entire property management staff is W-2. They are at their they are at their desk, uh, normal working hours every single day. You're going to have a dedicated property manager, a dedicated uh, tenant manager, and a dedicated maintenance manager. You'll always be speaking to the same people. You're going to know them. They're going to know you. They're going to know the property. It provides an, an incredible experience for the owner, but also a really good experience for the tenant. Our average stay in tenancy right now is three years, and that's much higher than, than most of our competitors. And that comes from the great experience our tenants have renting from Marshall Reddick. And again, I, I touched on the online reviews. Guys, please take time to go, go check those out. We're, we're really excited about what everyone has to say about our service. This is just a snapshot of our property management pricing flyer, right? Um, again, very transparent pricing. Uh, very modest pricing. We're definitely not the most expensive players in town. Um, and, you know, no trip charges, no up charges on maintenance, no charges during vacancy, no startup charges, anything in this nature. Pro the property management division for Marshall Reddick is, is not a profit center for our company. It is, it is, uh, it's what allows our clients' investments to work. And it, 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 it's what allows this, this whole, wheel to continue to turn, right? Because our goal is to help you make incredible investments. We want those investments to work incredibly for you. 
and then we want you to continue investing with us. And, and the best way that we have found for that service to, to be where it needs to be is for us to do the property management ourselves because our competitors are just not um, providing the service that our clients come to expect from Marshall Reddick. Right? So it is not a profit center for us. The, the, our charge, the 8% a month, is, is really the cost to provide an incredible experience and, and, and service for you guys. I'll make sure everyone gets a copy of this, but I just wanted you to have a, a you know, brief look. Now, as we round this out, I would invite everyone uh, to check out our education section on our website. Um, we have tens of thousands of hours of recorded webinars just like this on different markets, on different types of properties, on, on all sorts of different investment um, things, from 1031 exchanges to tax planning um, to forced appreciation multifamily. Whatever segment or niche of real estate investing you're excited about, you're gonna find a lot of information produced by us. We don't do any copy and pasting, anything like that on this website. Um, and so I just want everyone to know that they can go to marshallreddick.com slash learn um, at their convenience and, and learn about whatever it is they're looking to do. Marshall Reddick has always led as an educational company, right? Our goal is to provide the absolute best education on real estate investing possible for absolutely free. Again, in hopes um, that you decide that you want to work with a company that would do so. So this option is, and, and is available to you guys, and I invite you uh, to take advantage. We also have market data packets on every single one of our markets. Uh, these are data heavy. Um, we do a lot of analyzation and, and deep dives into the numbers to produce these, and we come out with new packets every single year. So if New Braunfels is an area that you think might make sense for your portfolio, please feel free to check out marshallreddick.com slash market data, and you can download the entire packet there absolutely free and dive as deep into the numbers and the analysis as you wish. Again, um, our gift to you guys, absolutely free. And finally, I mentioned this earlier in the, in the presentation, but um, our property rating ebook. This is the best first read uh, for any new investor. Now, a lot of you on this call, I know we have a lot of returning clients on this call. We've done business with a lot of people on this call tonight. I, you know that this is our Marshall Reddick Bible. I'm sure you've read it many times. But if you haven't, Great place to start, easy read, 42 pages, um, marshallreddick.com slash ebook. And if anyone wants a copy, please just let me know. I'll make sure to get one to you. All right, guys, we've come to the end. Thank you so much uh, for your time here this evening. Um, next steps uh, is to schedule a complimentary consultation uh, with myself. And we will sit down and talk about your goals and, and your timelines, what you're looking to accomplish, um, any hopes or hurdles uh, that happen to be particular to you. And we'll start building a plan and we'll come together with a plan and I'll present this plan to you and we can tweak it. And, you know, if we come up with a plan that makes sense and can help you accomplish your goals, then we can get you introduced to Josh and, and help make those, those goals a reality. This is my personal contact information. Anyone on this call can call me, text me, email me, FaceTime me, Whatever uh, makes you guys happy is cool with me. Please feel free to reach out for anything whatsoever. Um, I'll be following up with everybody after this seminar uh, to get your thoughts and your feedback. Uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Josh, thank you for taking the time out of your evening to be here. Thank for you, everyone. Time. No, really. This appreciate was really it. fun. Thank you. I really enjoyed this one. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, really exciting. And everyone, have a wonderful evening. We'll talk to you all soon. Thank you again. We'll make sure that we get a recorded copy of this sent over to you right away. Bye, everybody.